Today's guest is the sustainability enterprise catalyst of Hemp Black. Michael Savory joins us to talk about forging a purposeful and disruptive new material and differentiating Hemp Black from other fashion companies. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, let's please give Michael a big warm welcome to the show. It's so fantastic to see you again. It's amazing to be here. Thanks again for inviting me. This is something I've been looking forward to for the last few weeks. Well, I was at Fashion Innovation yes. at FIT, and one of our former School of Hustle guests, Emily Brickell of Cheek Sketch, was moderating your panel. Yes, it was uh, amazing to meet her and to meet you at the same time, and it was just a whole great event. I, I was listening to your story from the front row taking pictures of her, and uh, I just had to find you, and here we are. We connected a few weeks later, now... We're here. <laughs> and I have to thank you for being my 1,000th follower on Instagram. It was a, a pretty big thing, not gonna lie. You know, that hitting that follow request on Instagram um, really proved out to work very well for me as I'm here now. You've officially made me a nano influencer, which is <laughs> exciting. So thank you for that. But, you know, of course, we're, we're here to talk about your very, very interesting business. You were one of the first members to join Hemp Black. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hemp, you know, stirs some mixed reactions in people when they hear, you know, businesses centered around hemp. And I'm wondering, how do you describe the benefit of hemp to people who feel it's taboo? See, and that's a thing we get a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Hemp has had a very bad propaganda campaign against it for the last hundreds of years, saying what terrible plant it is, um, when in fact it's actually one of the best plants in the world. It's one of the only plants that can feed you, heal you, clothe you, and house you, all in just one beautiful plant. So having to talk to people and explain that it's actually a good plant that can do all these amazing things um, has been a fun journey. And Hemp Black is a disruptor in the production of apparel and accessories. Um, how is what you're doing at Hemp Black different than other companies? How is it changing the world? Like, tell us that really, you know, really what this is all about. So one of the ways that we're different from other companies and trying to change the world is what we kind of go forward with. Um, we're not your kind of company that just sets out to make amazing clothes, which we are doing, but we're also to find the science around it. So we pride ourselves on being a company that is technology first and fashion second. So we're able to put the science first as well as the sustainability to make sure that everything we're saying and putting forward is the truth and is the best product possible, which allows us to differentiate ourselves from the others. So is it that you're, it's a blend, it sounds like. It, it is a product, but it, it is a technology. Sure. And it's more of a technology than a product. Yes. So are you making fabrics? Are you making ink? Like, how, tell me about like, like what this technology is. I'm just very curious. Yeah, no, so that's a question we get asked a lot. Um, so we are both and doing everything and doing it all. Um, so we have six patented technologies right now that we're working on scaling up, um, coming everything from carbon infused fibers, which we call our hemp black origin, um, CBD infused fiber that are antimicrobial, as well as inks, vegan leather, and other properties such as nanofilms. Um, so with all of these great technologies, we're able to actually put those into clothing and into fabrics and any textile around you, so we're able to express our technology the best way. And so when you infuse these sort of fibers and things, does it make the fabric more sustainable, biodegradable? Does it have any environmental impact specifically or, or no? Hemp is naturally one of the most sustainable plants out there. It sequesters about 150% of its uh, weight in carbon dioxide, producing healthy, clean oxygen afterwards, as well as it helps to restore the soils um, and can be grown anywhere in the world. So by just switching to hemp and using that in your process, you're already making it that much more sustainable for the end consumer to use. Is it expensive and does that cost to get passed on to the customer? Thankfully, um, we actually have a sister company that we're able to take their waste streams from their processes. They are a CBD company. Um, we're able to take their waste and actually turn that into our products. So we're able to kind of close the loop on their system in order to produce our products, which is a huge benefit to the consumer when it comes to cost, um, as well as kind of not creating new materials. Wow. How did all of this get started? Uh, so that's a very interesting uh, story. So it all started when um, uh, Barry Lambert and Eric Wang of Ecofiber uh, approached Thomas Jefferson University to donate money 
um, to research industrial hemp. Our then chief innovation officer, Mark Sunderland, thought of a new idea of how is he going to revolutionize hemp and kind of bring it to the 21st century. And that's where he turned it on, turned it upside down and said, we're not going to use the scratchy, crunchy, I'm going to smoke my t-shirt kind of fiber that we're used to in the 70s and 80s, but actually make a technological advancement in the fiber of how we're using it. Um, hence, Hemp Black was born and our namesake and all this amazing technology that we're having today. You're wearing it today, yes. right? So Tell me about this, the logo, what, what's going on here? Yeah, so um, this shirt you're wearing here now, uh, the shirt itself isn't made from hemp. Um, but the ink is. So we've been able to create a, a hemp black ink from our technologies, um, something that is a lot more sustainable than the current black pigments out there on the market. Um, by able to substitute our ink for other inks in there, you'll be able to create a kind of a carbon negative ink um, that's both environmentally friendly, non-toxic, that you're able to print with on packaging, on t-shirts, on absolutely everything. So this is one of our first to market uh, technologies, um, but it's something that's going to be able to grow as printer ink and all those things are huge, huge markets. Oh, yes. I, the, the light just went on when yes. you said that. Oh, the oh, it's, the impact and the reach is enormous. Correct. So sustainability is clearly very important to you. It's a word that's used a lot. I don't know if everybody knows what it actually means. Yes. When you think about what sustainability means to hemp lab. Mm -hmm. How would you describe it to those watching? So it's true. Sustainability <laughs> is a tricky one. Yeah. Um, it's one of the words I sometimes hate to use because it is such a, nobody really knows what the meaning is. Um, sustainability can be anything from making sure your finances are good or correct. You're, you're able to sustain yourself. But for us at Hemp Black, how that looks at is being able to create technologies and products that are um, fair on the environment. We're doing no damage it's kind of within our mission statement as itself as well as improving the lives of the people who interact with it. So by creating clothing that is antimicrobial without the use of silver, um, we're able to create something that has no, no worries of it leaching onto your skin. So we take into aspect the, the health of the consumers and the health of the environment, as well as being able to be financially secure for all of us within the company or else. If, if we're not secure in that, we won't be able to spread our technologies um, around the world. And what advice would you have for consumers that say that they're not quite there yet. Many consumers do care about what you're talking about. You bet they do, but what about those who say, eh, I don't know, what's the big deal? Uh, I, see, that's a tough one. You, you're right? never going to get past those consumers that want yeah. to say no to everything, but right. mine is the education. If you look around us today, um, you go outside, it's it's fall, it's winter, it's, it's hotter than it was 30 years ago. Um, snow is melting. These are things we can't, uh, we can't continue to ignore. Um, so while they say that they, they can live with it for now, live with it for tomorrow, in a few years, they'll, uh, they'll notice a difference. <laughs> so how are you thinking about getting traction in the marketplace? So that is a fun one um, for us, but it comes down to what I said earlier is the science um, and the education side of things. So we don't see ourselves as, as I said, just a fashion company. We're also a technology company and an education company. Um, we do things such as this with GoDaddy. We do conferences where we're telling people not just that we're producing these amazing products, but this is also what hemp can do for you. Um, by showing all aspects of the, fa the, fa uh, the plant itself, we're able to kind of break down those barriers of everyone saying, oh, you're just trying to sell us those products. So, um, and also putting the consumer first. Um, within our company as a whole, we have years and years of experience on both the retail side, the manufacturing side, and the development side. So using all of that experience to saying, okay, what does the consumer want at each stage? of that production process, we're able to kind of encapsulate all of the consumer's needs um, at the beginning of the product as well as the final. And what will success look like for you? For us being successful will be our technology kind of around the world and not just um, in our clothing line, in our brand that we're starting, but everywhere. Um, there's so many great brands out there that are using other companies' technologies to make a difference. Um, and I think that's what success will be for us, is how we're able to partner with those companies who are also making a difference now um, to work with them to make a difference on a wider scale. And with that said, how about we take on the game called Hustle Time? Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do it. Drive stick shift or automatic? Stick shift. Yes or no socks with sandals? Uh, no. Most irrational fear? Uh, bears. No cheese ever again or no sugar ever again? No sugar. Describe yourself in three words. Uh, unique, interesting, Canadian. Surf set, cocktails poolside? Uh, poolside. Least favorite candy? Cinnamon hearts. Saturday morning cartoons or late night TV? Late night TV. Drive yourself or call a car service? Uh, drive myself. Favorite Jennifer Lopez movie? 
I haven't seen any. Would your mother, how would your mother describe you? Uh, stubborn. Who is someone that defines success to you? Muhammad Ali. Favorite breakfast cereal? Uh, Fruit Loops. Summer or winter? Uh, winter. Best part of your workout? Uh, the end. Personal trainer is effective or too much cash? Uh, too much cash. Great flavor, yay or nay? Y nay. Which would you rather add to your life, time or value? Time or value? Value. Okay, go to karaoke song. Uh, Backstreet Boys. Me meatballs or fish? Uh, fish. Um, favorite, re first record you bought with your own money? Oh. What is it? Chronic 2000. All right! One, two, 18. 19, 20, 21. 20. Yeah. The lucky 21 though. It's legal. Legal. And you, I have to go back actually because I was in the spirit of competition. Yeah. I said go to karaoke song and you said Backstreet Boys. Boys. But then I didn't let you say the song. And that's a group and we're gonna count it because that's my fault. But I have to ask though, what is your actual song? I want it that way. I want it that way. I'm not gonna, yeah. my karaoke's no. terrible. That's it's why. It's a great I, one. I like that one. Every, the, the whole audience sings with me when I do that one. So it's, Oh, if you can get everyone to stop having drinks and chatting and join in on your performance, so That's think, the way to go. I think it's go. more for their sanity so they don't have to hear me anymore, but. Favorite part of your day? 11 a.m. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Don't worry about things you can't affect. Worst piece of advice? Don't question things. How do you use your career to inspire others? Uh, I've been given a great opportunity to educate the world, so education. Ever felt like walking away? Uh, thankfully not, no. One thing you still need to learn. Uh, that there's a lot more than one thing. What do you want people to learn from you? Um, that hemp is an amazing plant. What's next for you? Um, just expanding what we're doing now. Just kind of showing the world who we are at Hemp Black. Who inspires you? My team. Who challenges you? My team. <laughs> They do, don't they? Yeah, it's it's a great work dynamic, but you know, it's you need those people on your team to challenge you with everything you do or else you'll never progress forward. Well, this next question is actually coming from our favorite pug, Entrepreneurial, and he needs a little advice if that would be okay. <laughs> Noodle loves to look his best and wear nice clothes, but he has become highly aware of environmental impacts of fast fashion. What advice would you have for someone who wants to change their habits as a consumer and support a more sustainable lifestyle? Um, I would say to take a second and actually look at what you're doing. Um, a lot of people think that you need to make these big grand gestures to make more of a sustainable lifestyle, and that's not true. It always starts with the little things, whether it's reading the tag tags of your clothing to see where it's made from, try to buy local, um, or just even looking where you're shopping. Um, you want to support those companies that are uh, homegrown, uh, that are producing things on a, like I said, a local level, um, but also just realizing that it's the small things that will make a large difference. Um, biking more to work rather than driving or getting reusable straws, they all make, they all add up to make a big difference. They do. It, it all counts. And, and I think also we don't have to live in a world of like the quantity being like, I need all these different things, but maybe fewer pieces that if they cost a little more, you know, that's okay because you have fewer pieces at a higher quality and it seems like a small thing at the time, but it's really making a big value and a big impact on the world. No, exactly. And if every person did that, that adds up. Exactly. There's like how many billions of people in the world? Every person did one thing. And that's the thing, if we have, rather than five pieces for going out once, we just have one really good piece that you can wear multiple times, that piece will last you much longer. Or you even can get into like the consignment economy. Yeah. You know, your your clothing could end up on Real Real as a high authenticated piece of fashion. And, and maybe that's a next step too, right? Because yeah. the idea of like sharing and reusing is okay. <laughs> no, exactly. And that's, that's the thing is, is to reduce, reuse, and always refuse. Just rebuy, refuse to buy new and just... I like that. When we close out the show, I always like to um, leave everybody with a final thought. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read three quotes okay. and ask you which one resonates the most with you and why, okay? Number one, whenever you find yourself in the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. Number two, there is no traffic jam along the extra mile. And number three, too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears. Oh, I'm gonna say, say number three. Um, and the reason for that is a lot of people think that they won't be able to succeed if they, they leave or take that leap of faith. Um, many of us are caught in jobs that are either going nowhere 
or just doing it because we need to make ends meet. But at the end of the day, you'll always survive. Uh, so we've survived for thousands of years and it's not gonna stop now. So definitely the third one. Thank you for that. And thank you for opening up today. Yeah, no, thank you for inviting me. This has been a wonderful experience and everything you're doing here is, is amazing. Thank you. How can everyone follow you? Um, so you can follow us. Um, we are our website, www.hempblack.com on Instagram at hempblack or my personal one at michael.savory as well as on Twitter at hempblackusa. And I also have to say to also follow GoDaddy because we have fabulous entrepreneurs like Michael coming to you every week across Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, all the usual suspects. And as always, we'll see you soon. Bye. See you soon.